go You wanna be an accountant? Then get over It ain't easy, you might need a folded clover If you ain't willing to work hard, then can it It's the most sought after job on this planet Now, you tell me you wanna be an impartial judge of my solvency Now, you tell me you wanna protect the world from corporate fraudulency Now, all that sounds like fun, son But you gotta walk before you can run To know what these numbers mean You gotta know the debit credit theory So, if you really wanna know budget cash flow, where your money go, then give in to the temptation. Understand the fundamental accounting equation. An asset increasing is a debit. An asset decreasing is a credit. The reverse is true for liabilities and equity. If you get this, then you get accounting. Debit's on the left, credit's on the right. Never left, credit right. Never left, credit right. Good morning. Hope everyone is enjoying their Saturday. This is Olga Cher, uh, your host with Antonanka Earth Art School. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, and today we have Galina Shekov with us. Uh, and the class is Financial Literacy for Kids and Adults. Uh, Galina will be sharing some really good information with us. So grab your pens, gra grab your uh, uh, notebooks. Uh, you may have some questions later on. Keep them until our discussion at the end of the class. And uh, in the meantime, I will ask you to mute your microphones so we don't get uh, static from your living rooms. Uh, that will help a lot. And uh, welcome, Galina. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to start this class with a little story. A couple of years ago, my office hired an assistant property manager, a young, um, educated, beautiful girl who was very excited about a new job, opportunity learning, and about her more than reasonable for her age and experience salary. She lived with her parents in a nice Queens uh, neighborhood house. She liked nice clothes, she likes nice food, entertainment, and she was very excited that she could afford all of this without asking her parents for the funds. In a little while, she decided she doesn't want to live with her parents anymore, but she wants to move to share apartment in New York City. This is what she did. Uh, she also did a little changes in her life, like a little one, like, like uh, she stopped buying, she stopped drinking coffee in her house or at the office, but she would rather buy coffee from Starbucks. She stopped taking train. She was taking Uber instead. So she was uh, adopting the New York City lifestyle. In um, 
couple of months, I realized, I noticed that she wasn't happy anymore, but I didn't ask questions because I didn't want to intrude to her personal life until uh, sometime later she came to me and she said, Galina, you're an accountant. Can you please explain me what I did wrong? Why um, I have no money in my bank account and uh, big balance in my credit card account. And I told her, you made a mistake by moving out of your parents' house. So we took a piece of paper and we prepared her personal financial statement. When she looked at the numbers, she was shocked. She realized that under no circumstances, she could manage her expenses based on her current salary. When she gained her consciousness, I asked her a question. I asked her if she ran any kind of budget analysis when she decided to move out. And now it was my turn to be shocked. She said that, uh, she asked me basically what is the budget. She didn't know what it is. So at this point, I realized that even though she knew the words like income and expenses. She really didn't know how it works and what it means. I realized at that point that we need to teach our children not only math, science, but maybe the most important topic in their life is financial literacy. Today we live in the information age. Information is abundant and more often free, but it takes um, educational process, education to process information into knowledge. So let's talk what is money. The first thing which comes to mind when we talk about financial education is money. Money is a vital and crucial but not paramount. It's simply a tool a source of power used in the service of others and life well lived. Others are consumed with such a hunger for money that it destroys them and everyone around them. In the end, money isn't, it, isn't what we're after, is it? We are after, what we really after is a feeling, is emotions. We think money can create. It's a feeling of empowerment, feeling of freedom, feeling of security. It's a availability to helping those in love and those in need. It's a freedom of having a choice, freedom of feeling life. Money, it's either you use it or they use you. It's either you master money or master will at some level Master, money master you. Today we will talk about financial money world and what exactly they mean and how to make them help us and not other way around. What other financial tools are available to us? Imagine there is no money in the world. How would you get things that you need? You will need to make something for exchange. This is called barter economy. How will you assign value based on your time, experience, skills? How do you come count everything that goes in it? How do you compare the value of the things you make to the things you need? This is what we will be talking about today, regardless of what kind of tools you use money, other currency on barters, you will need to know how to calculate your assets, liability, income, revenue, and expenses. For the purpose of this class and to make it easy to understand, we will refer all financial tools as money. All of this is part of the accounting. Many people, including me in the beginning, think that accounting is possibly the most confusing and boring subject in the world. But it doesn't have to be. And if you want to 
to be successful is uh, to be financially successful in the long run it could be the most important subject for you most people fail to realize that it's not how much money you make it's how much money you keep remember the young girl in the beginning of my story now i want to tell you a different story two young high school students enjoy baking after they graduated high school one of them went to have a degree in cia culinary institute of america one of the best school in the world in this field while other majored in business administration after they graduated college, they decided to start their own bakery shop business in the busy college campus area. When they start drafting their business plan, they added a bicycle branch to their business. They also were selling few of the very popular local products, which they were buying from the local folks, like organic candles and baking and um, soap etc. Why would they start a business? And what people got to work for? Yes, it would be very nice to do all of this just for pleasure. However, most the main point of doing this is to generate income or simply stated to receive cash. Let's talk about the structure of this newly started bakery business. The first category, the first word, which I'm sure all of you heard, but I want you to understand, it's the word, the word income. So income, this is what we go to business for, to generate cash, to receive cash. This bakery shop decided to have a few different categories of income. They had income from selling their bakery like cupcakes muffins cookies candies they also had a separate kind of income it's from selling a special occasion cakes they decided to keep it separately like for wedding cakes uh, graduation cakes you name it they did not have any income for their biking because bike bike delivery was complimentary it wasn't an income they didn't charge customers for this business they also collected funds from selling candles soaps and other um, items which they bought from the local folks okay this is what they were selling but how did they make all of this they had expenses if my list of income consisted only like for the, out of few from the few items, expenses has very, very, very much uh, categories. The first thing they had to do, they had to rent the space where they would uh, have their business. So for this space, they have to pay probably the biggest expense, which is rent. They paid monthly rent, it's an expense. Of course, they had to buy baking ingredients like flowers eggs milk baking soda chocolate sprinkles nuts nuts etc they had to buy baking forms sheets parking supplies of course they would like to pay themselves a salary because they had to have their personal expenses so the payroll to the owner is an expense they also had to pay to the hired help employees bikers bakers sorry bike riders this is payroll expense is also tax uh, is also expense they paid various taxes like income taxes sales tax um payroll tax all of these taxes are payable to the government it's a mandatory expenses which nobody can avoid so this is all their expenses they also had to pay a legal fees because they needed an attorney to set up a corporation for them however this is something very interesting this attorney had a weekly meetings in his office 
And what he offered it to the owners of this store and they accepted, it's a deal. He said, why don't you deliver baking goods to my office once a week in the next four months instead of paying me cash? What do you think it's called? What kind of transaction was here? So they didn't pay him cash. Instead, they delivered his cookies to his office for three months, you know, every week. This is an example of the barter service. They paid for the store electricity, water, telephone, internet expenses. This is all expenses which every business has. You cannot avoid it, those expenses. You actually have these expenses in your home as well. They have to have a cleaning service. But they were decided, they decided to save this money and they decided that they're gonna clean themselves. So they not they didn't hire this anybody to do cleaning. The same thing for the repair and maintenance. Instead of hiring somebody, they just went, they bought paint and they saved money on repair by painting themselves. Repair and maintenance, this is an expense which every business has, and I'm sure your household has the same expenses as well. Then they have another category of expense, which is called sales discount. They offer it to the clients who would buy $20 worth of cooks, uh, cook, uh, baking goods, a 5% discount. They had to pay accounting fee. This is an expense. They pay to accountant to prepare all kinds of um, taxes they had to pay for keeping expenses. But again, they're smart people, educated people, they decide they could save money by doing bookkeeping themselves. What does it mean bookkeeping? Bookkeeping means that every single day, every transaction, either it was collecting money or paying money to somebody, has to be recorded in the books of the corporation. That's why it's called bookkeeping. Every single business has bookkeepers, people who keep books, who properly recognize all income and expenses. They also had a minivan, which they need a parking to pay a parking. Parking fee is expense. They had to buy gas for the cars. Gas is an expense. They had to buy insurance for business and for the cars, the auto insurance. This is expense. They had to pay medical insurance for the owners and employees. This is expense. Office supply. This is expense. This is an example. Of the, the latest expenses are examples of expenses which are applicable to every single business, no matter what. So they also had to pay interest expense on the loan. And we're going to talk about interest and loans a little bit later. So all this big list of exp uh, is, uh, expenses which are applicable to the, this baking business, but many of them are applicable to all the business. So we kind of know what is this income. This is what we're generating. This is what ca cash comes into us. And we know what are the expenses. This is what we pay in order to generate this income. And by paying, there is cash which coming out of our bank account. There is uh, something which is called net income or profit. What is the net income and profit? Net income and or profit is calculated based on the very simple mathematical formula. It's the total income less total expenses. The bigger number of the net income profit, the better the business is doing. If the number is negative, business is losing money. So we all know simple math, and we know that it's in this formula, if we want to increase income, net income or profit, we can do it basically three ways. The first way, we should, we can increase income. The second way, we can decrease expenses. But the most efficient way is to do the same thing at the same time increase income and decrease expenses, this is what will bring you profit higher. Um, 
let's let's look to examples how can we do this let's for example they look at the water bill and they see that it's unusually high what they should do they should call for the plumber and check maybe their toilet leaking constantly and water consumption is too high this is basically a good example to check your water bill in your home as well or Maybe they can see that what they pay to the flower, to their supplier, is too much money. Maybe they can look for different supplier to buy the same quality of flower, but with a lower price. This is another example of uh, reducing cost. Or maybe they think, you know what, why don't we offer a 5% discount to people who buy $50, $50 worth of goods, not 20 like before. Probably the most, uh, the easiest way for them to do it is the increased cost. If, for example, you paid like $3 for cupcakes before, they would say, you know what, we increased the cost, now you have to pay us $3.50. But without knowledge of each component, component what does it mean? You, you cannot run a successful business. The analysis should be done even if your business is successful, even if you have money in the bank and you think it's successful because you may find something that you can increase your income even more. The next category which we want to talk about is assets. Assets is a very, very important word. Assets is something significant that you own, that you can use in the process of generating income to collect cash, something that belongs to you. Just remember, assets, it's significant things which belongs to you. And if you look at the list of the assets on the slides, you see that uh, the first, in this example, in bakery shop, the most important asset is education, it's a college degree, it's a life skill. Without education, without the skills, they wouldn't be able to generate any profit, to collect any cash. Cash in the bank is an asset because you can invest it and collect more cash. They had to buy various ovens for baking, correct? So ovens, baking ovens are assets, they're gonna use it year after year. It's not for one year, it's for the long term. Refrigerators, the same thing. This is what they own, which they're going to use year after year. And because the refrigerator will save them a lot of money, they don't have to buy uh, eggs like every day. This is why it's asset. The window displays, where they display their product, it's asset. Tables, chairs, which they put in the bake shop, this is asset. Bicycles, mini vans. This is what they own, and thanks to, to these assets, they can collect cash. Computers, you know, every business has computers now. So computer is definitely an asset because if you buy a good computer, it's gonna last you for some time. Decoration, pictures, flowers, wall decor. This is all example of assets. This is assets for this business and some of them for all businesses. But if you think about different kind of businesses, like for example, take a hospital. Hospital, of course, will have a different kind of assets. Uh, building is an asset for a hospital, for the plant, for the real estate. Hospital will have a lot of very expensive equipment, which is an asset. If you take like a fashion industry, Again, it's a building, it's a, it's a sewing machine, it's a different, so each plant, each business has their own assets. Assets, it's what belongs to them and what they can use in order to generate more income. Assets, it's a very, very good thing. The more assets you have, the better off you are. The next category is liability. If you, Simply stated, it's not such a good thing because it's something what you owe to somebody. Uh, the first thing which probably this business has, it's a loan to the bank. So when they decided to start the business, they took a loan. They were approved by the bank based on their very impressive education, 
and based on their part-time experience. So the bank gave them $50,000 loan and they agreed to pay 4% interest during the next 10 years. We're gonna talk about interest in our ne next sessions. But interest, this is what we pay because to the bank, because bank lent us uh, $50,000. So in this scenario, loan to the bank is a liability. Liability is something that you owe to somebody, something that you have to pay to somebody. Another example of the very popular liability, unfortunately, is a credit card balance. Because owners paid for certain expenses by credit card. Uh, most of them they paid, of course, by checks, but some of them they paid by credit cards. If you pay your credit card balance in full every single month, you do not have to pay interest on credit card. However, very few people do it. People usually pay the minimum amount, and this is how they end up, end, uh, up uh, paying huge um, interest on the bank. The auto loan, if you buy the car but take a car loan, this is your liability. This is what you have to pay every single month. And like I said, the next session, we're going to talk about liabilities and interest in more detail. Now, I want you to take, to grab a piece of paper and the pen and, sp and spend a few minutes to figure out which category of each of these items which will appear on the screen in a uh, screen belongs to income, expense, assets, and liability. Take a moment and take a look. What is the sales of cakes, purchase of flowers, purchase uh, of paint, purchase of eggs, gas for the minivans, payment to cleaning service, purchase wrapping paper, credit card balance, computers. Please take a minute. I hope you can join us for the next class uh, on Saturday, April 14, at also 9.30 a.m. It would be for budgeting, tracking money flow, simple and compound interest. And if you do have any questions, you can always contact me uh, by email, uh, gshekov at gmail.com. And thank you very much for your attendance and thank you very much for participation. And we really want to hear what do you think? Was it helpful? Did you enjoy it? Uh, we need your opinion for the future lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Galina, for preparing it so nicely. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks, much, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend.